Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for October 2nd, 2020, recorded around 11.06 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look across the tropical Atlantic right now, we do have a couple of things ongoing today. First of all, we start down here in the southwestern Caribbean with Tropical Depression uh, 25, newly christened Tropical Depression 25. This, uh, just as of the 11 o'clock advisory, has been uh, classified as a tropical cyclone. This will be moving slowly over the next several days off towards the west-northwest and could interact with the landmass of the Yucatan Peninsula and the Cayman Islands uh, over there to the east of where the storm is now. And then eventually kind of making a slow rendezvous over here with the Yucatan Peninsula before finding itself somewhere out here in the southwestern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. And this has uh, pretty significant implications going forth with time. And we'll talk about some of those here in a couple of moments. We also have uh, partially this now stalled front across South Florida that kind of runs all the way up across here. A cutoff circulation and occluded low over here and another tropical wave right now that also has a shot at developing a 30% chance over the next five days as this tropical wave moves basically right over the same area. And then we also have a tropical wave right now uh, midway between uh, the Cabo Verde Islands and the Lesser Antilles. So there is a lot to talk about. We'll start here with newly christened Tropical Depression 25, maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour, moving off towards the northwest at 9. And you can see that this is expected to become Tropical Storm Gamma, uh, probably by uh, late tonight or early tomorrow morning. Now, there's a Tropical Storm warning uh, for portions of the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. And uh, this could, uh, again, try to sneak maybe a little bit further towards the north. Now, the intensity uh, from the National Hurricane Center at the 11 o'clock advisory was a little bit conservative because, as we can see here, this does go over the far northern tip of the Yucatan here. Now, there's a couple of things that we'll talk about and discuss as to why that may or may not happen. There's a lot of considerable uncertainty uh, but most of the guidance then suggests a turn back towards the west later in towards uh, next week. So this is going to be kind of moving around a, a while. This is not going to be a very fast moving storm because of this cold front towards the north. And we'll talk about another threat with this cold front uh, for Florida. Uh, but this does not seem to be a, a threat for southeast Florida. It doesn't seem to want to do something like that. There is some ensemble guidance that does, but it doesn't seem like that is going to be the most probable. Right now, it seems like this will kind of come follow right along the, the coast of the Yucatan and then turn back west as this is a little bit of a weaker storm uh, at that point in time. Now, if we go down here to the kind of the, the zoomed in shot here, this is the mesosector shot of our tropical depression. You can see very clear rotational uh, circulation with our storm right now. Very clear and evident. Uh, that banding structure evident towards the north. We have banding on towards the southwest and southeast side, kind of wrapping in there on the east. So this is uh, a very clear, uh, kind of very clear picture that we have some sort of closed low-level center of circulation in this area. Microwave imagery even showed what could be a possible inner core structure trying to get organized. And this may already be even a tropical storm. We just don't have reconnaissance aircraft in there right now, which we'll have later uh, in the afternoon. But uh, once again, there's just a lot of uncertainty as to where this is going to end up being. Now, if this is a stronger storm, this gets pulled and tugged a little bit further towards the north and maybe even misses uh, portions of the North Yucatan Peninsula coastline. That's very important. This is the Cayman Island uh, right out here. But this may have an opportunity to get a little bit stronger down here over the next day or so while it's under a relatively light shear environment and very warm sea surface temperatures and this might have a chance to just kind of graze or uh, pass just to the east of the North Yucatan Peninsula coastline, which would obviously have implications on its intensity and track down the line. So that's very important going forth here. Now, 
that we start to pay attention to that. <clears throat> now we can really see here, this is the 850 vorticity map from 12Z or 8 o'clock this morning. We can see a very well-defined area of spin down here, but it's still pretty elongated. It's, it's kind of a north uh, to south orientation right now. It, it's not necessarily like we see this area of kind of uh, energy down here that's trying to bundle it it's not kind of like that it's more of an oblong shape here kind of this oval shape and it's not necessarily the best organized but it does seem to be coming better organized and we do uh, seemingly have enough of a closed low level center of circulation to designate this as a tropical cyclone so it does make sense that this is a tropical cyclone, tropical depression, and again, the next name would be Tropical Storm Gamma as we are now into the Greek alphabet. But you can already see, though, these rain bands on the east side impacting the Cayman Islands, and we scroll this up even more, you can see it impacting portions of the western part of Cuba, and this is going to be continuing over the next several days. Uh, already we're getting impacts here towards the coastline of the Yucatan Peninsula, all the way down here across portions of North Central America. So there is something, you know, that there is impacts already occurring and those will only be getting worse uh, over the next several days as it gets closer to the Yucatan Peninsula coastline here. Now, if we take a look here at our vertical wind shear, we can also see that right now our storm is in a relatively light, modest area of relative shear. Uh, shear mounts right now on the order of, you know, roughly about 10 to 15 knots of vertical wind shear. But you can see how drastic those numbers increase uh, as you go further up. You have 60, you know, 50, 60, 70 knots of shear across the Gulf of Mexico here. And that's the one thing that's going to be really tearing our storm apart as it moves northward. Now, the shear is going to abate somewhat, and we'll take a look at that here in a moment. Uh, but generally, there's a lot of unfavorable conditions to the north of where our storm is going. So unfavorable conditions do await this and probably will have a chance to tear the storm apart just a tad bit. Now, if we look here on the GFS forecast, this is the 6Z model run from 1 o'clock this morning. And we'll just kind of move this out here to about 2 p.m. this afternoon. You can see where the GFS has this. It does have somewhat of a closed low-level center of circulation, but still a broad area. And that's kind of what we've seen, this broad area of turning and vorticity, background vorticity in the atmosphere. And we've seen that today. Uh, but the GFS forecast does suggest that this tries to really tighten up and close off here. Uh, well, it's already closed off, but tighten up even more by Saturday, by late tonight into early Saturday. This could become a tropical storm moving through portions of the, you know, right off or just near uh, the north coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Now, one thing that is also going to be happening, if we take a look at the GFS forecast, this is the 700 to 400 millibar relative humidity. And this is basically showing all of our dry air that's kind of showing up here in the brown color and all the moist air in the green color. Now, what we can see is that we, we just have to look for this very neutral line right here, kind of the denotation between the air mass change. And we can see at this gradient, there's also a theta E gradient in here, uh, but this gradient along with the theta E gradient uh, and the moisture gradient does suggest that this is where the frontal boundary is positioned right now. This is a stalled cold front that's kind of uh, come down from the continental United States. And this has now been stalled out for the last couple of days across South Florida. And it's moved very slowly. And you can see this is uh, from one o'clock this morning and that's where our tropical cyclone TD25 now is. And we see this other tropical wave right here near the Lesser Antilles. So what's happening is our storm is naturally going to move off towards the north and west here because this cold front is what's really pulling this storm towards the north. These trade winds are slowing down here and you get a change in the wind direction out towards the northwest. So you're getting that northeast trajectory. But what starts to happen is not only do we have a dry air mass back behind this cold front, but we also have a relatively uh, steep wind shear gradient where we go from a light shear environment to a relatively high hostile shear environment 
uh, right near and behind this cold front, and that's because of the air mass changes that do occur. Now, if we go forth here, we go out to another 24 hours. This is 60 Saturday, so this is 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now, we start to see some changes occur with this cold front. First of all, the orientation is now beginning to change a little bit. You can kind of see that orientation now change. And what's happening is we have an upper level trough that you can't really see here in the low levels. But in, in the higher altitudes, and we'll show this in, in a moment, we have a upper level trough here that's kind of pushing this dry air and this air mass to the west. Now, at the same time, you have a tropical cyclone down here across the southwestern Caribbean. Now, this tropical cyclone now is trying to intensify, likely tropical storm Gamma at this point. And now this is going to start to tug on our cold front and pull it northward. So this whole area of uh, energy is going to be pulled north. And we can now see that happen uh, from where it was. If we look back earlier, this stalled front, it gets amped. Uh, out here to 48 hours or we'll actually kind of jump that back here to, th to about 30 hours from now this is uh, 12 z tomorrow or eight o'clock uh, in the morning tomorrow we can start to see now that our cold front is actually lifting northward and along with the kind of associated warm front in this area now besides our tropical cyclone this is also going to focus a very heavy rainfall event over central and south florida we've already seen a foot of rain occur in the treasure coast uh, already down near uh, Port St. Lucie uh, and Vero Beach, we've already seen rainfall amounts exceeding nearly a, a foot of rain, 12 inches. And that is because this very stalled front has just consistently trained uh, convection over the same area for days on end now, for, for days on end, for about the last two days or so. We've seen that rain build up. And it's not entirely in, unlikely to see another six to eight inches fall across the South Florida region and then two to four inches spreading across North Central Florida, really from the Tampa uh, Bay I-4 corridor southward, uh, including Metro Orlando and Melbourne southward. You could see a very heavy rainfall uh, event setting up. And we can see that here on the GFS forecast. This is our 48 now we have the tropical cyclone here just off the northern tip here we have this very heavy rainfall event setting up over florida so even if this storm doesn't in fact actually make it anywhere close to the florida coastline we still have a very heavy rainfall threat setting up and that is going to send a lot of rain this way very heavy rainfall flooding potential so at the very least there is something to be concerned about in terms of flooding uh for florida so uh, yes, you should be monitoring a tropical, you know, what would be tropical storm gamma, but you also should be monitoring for the flooding potential that's going to occur well away from this. And that's also in part because of this cold front uh, down here. You can see now uh, this is by 1 a.m. Sunday. You can now start to see this dry air. Now, because this is an established circulation, you have your dry air that's now starting to be kind of wrapped around into the center of circulation here. And uh, what's going to start happening now is this is going to get choked off as we have wind shear that's coming now out of the southwesterly direction, allowing all of this dry air to get wrapped around and no inner core to be established. And we can see that on the GFS forecast, it keeps it a relatively weak cyclone and actually drifts it further west because the steering flow at this time is forcing a storm westward while the mid-level steering flow is out of the northeasterly direction. So if we do have a stronger storm in here, this might get a little bit further northward, but that's looking a little bit on the unlikely side at the current moment in time. Now we can see another visualization on this at the 200 millibar level. Excuse me, this is the GFS forecast out here at the 200 millibar level in the atmosphere. And what we can really see is right now the storm is under an upper level anticyclone that's kind of positioned here. And you can see all of this deep moisture return coming out from the Caribbean into the Gulf of Mexico. And that's going to generally kind of be the setup throughout the next several days is that we're going to have this anticyclonic flow bringing a return flow pattern into Florida. And this is going to set up for all that heavy rainfall across this area. You can also see where our jet maximum is just to the north. And this provides a pretty good rainfall event just to the south of where that jet maximum is. So that's very important kind of going forth with time. 
Now, if we move this out here to hour 48, we can start to see a couple of things start to change here. First of all, now the uh, GFS forecast that kind of depicts the storm here uh, by one o'clock in the morning on Sunday. And you can also see this displaced upper level anticyclone over Cuba. And that is helping to induce uh, potentially a little bit of south and southeasterly shear on our storm. But you notice what happens as time goes on, our storm now uh, begins to encounter uh, more so of 25 to 30 knots of shear coming out of the southwesterly direction. And that now starts to really impinge on our storm. And that kind of remains the case throughout the next several days that we start to see this kind of overall southwesterly shear pattern. And that's all in response because there's another trough here. Uh, and you can see kind of where this trough is carved out. It's actually more so right up here. That's the or trough that's kind of carved out through there. And that's producing southwesterly flow on the front side of it, kind of in that right front quadrant of this trough. And that's helping to induce a little bit of vertical wind shear. Now, after that time, though, however, it does seem that what may actually end up happening is we get, uh, this is beyond five days, but we get a little bit of a lighter flow and our storm is able to intensify in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. And that's entirely possible and we can't rule that out at the moment. We are also watching potentially for yet another tropical wave to kind of come through. And we can kind of see that here on the GFS forecast that we may actually have two parts of this wave. We may have a southern part to the wave and a northern part to the wave. Now, vertical wind shear uh, throughout this time frame would be relatively light. You don't have a whole lot of wind shear on the southern part of it and not a lot of wind shear on the northern part of it so this is something to watch over the next several days but generally not of great concern right now so again there is something to watch here tropical depression 25 soon to be tropical storm gamma uh, assuming it does get named uh, this again pretty much is on pace for a 2005 type uh, record if October does remain busy. So there is a lot to watch again. Tropical storm watches and warnings for portions of the North Yucatan Peninsula coastline likely to become tropical storm gamma later tonight or tomorrow and then eventually make its way across the Yucatan uh, in through the southwestern Bay of Campeche and Gulf of Mexico. And obviously, we also have another tropical wave that bears watching over the next several days or so. All right. With that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.